$15 million? If the law goes back to what it's going to, 55% is going to be taxed with over a million. So you take the 10, you minus the 1, that's $9 million. You multiply that times 55, that's a big tax. Who has that number? What would that be? Come on. 4 million. What's left? Yeah, it's a lot. It's even, yeah, there's a huge tax. Give it away now. And what, but what, the, what are they thinking? You know, I've only, we only have combined 10. And if I give away 5.12, I have less than 10. I have less than 5. So I don't think we're going to go there. But wait a minute. Do we have something for you? Here's a, here's a for Scott Gunderson's sake, we'll say, here's a, eat your cake and have it too. <laughs> he, will, he, he could spend time at a cocktail party telling you why saying half your cake and eat it too is improper. It's how you can eat your cake and have it too. First off, we have to make a, a, a huge assumption that this is a good and permanent relationship. <laughs> okay? Until the day after The husband is not a tennis pro. The husband is a typically a discretionary beneficiary. So now you have your bailout. Now you can have the trustee, and the trustee can be, I mean, there's a lot of, we don't talk much about trustees and won't, but if you had adult children, for example, ad adult children could be the trustee. And they could have the ability to make distributions subject to ascertainable standards to anybody, including the husband. They could have this, they could have the ability to go beyond ascertainable standards, to make distributions to the husband for whatever reason. Because what kind of a trustee would they be since they're beneficiaries? Are they a substantially adverse party? Heck yeah. Because what happens to every dollar that goes out for the benefit of dad? They don't basically comes out of their pocket. <laughs> you don't get much more adverse than that. So for smaller estates, and, and again, smaller could be 100 million if clients are, are uncomfortable. A, a spousal access trust or a Burt and Ernie trust can be getting clients to do planning that they wouldn't otherwise do. From a tax perspective, it's cleaner not having the spouse involved, just getting rid of it, letting it all grow, but clients sometimes say, wait a minute, it's my money, I don't feel comfortable. So this gives them a comfort level.